Hey guys, welcome back to the New England Scrapper. Now, today, I've got a, uh, kind of a short scrap. I'm assuming it's only going to take, you know, 10-15 minutes at the absolute most. So, this weekend, I went out and did another pickup. And I ended up getting three old, old, old CRT monitors. This first one here is an NEC Multisync. I don't think I've even seen one of these before, but these are, like, old. Anyways, I figured it might make an interesting video to, you know, just kind of sit down and scrap them out. So we're going to start off here. We're going to get this, uh, this cord off. So just cut that right there. Now, a good little tip for anyone that's just starting scrapping. Now... You know, if your yard tells you not to do this, then don't. But whenever you're cutting, you know, any sort of uh, plug for scrap or anything, the you know, the more insulation like this you can leave on, the more money you're going to make. Now, not every yard's going to allow you to do that, but some will, some won't. So we got a nice piece of uh, <clears throat> number two insulated wire right here. So. Uh, right in the number two insulated bucket. We've got the uh, gold pin connector, which can range from 50 cents to a dollar, depending, depending on who you sell it to. I'm going to still pick that up later. Anyways, let's get, in the let's get into scrapping this thing. So, I think it might just be the two screws, and we can kind of slide this back out. But we'll see. That's a really odd design. I don't think we've ever seen this before. Oh no, I see. We have more screws underneath here. How is this? Okay, so what do we got here? Now the first thing that I do, just to try to make it a little bit safer, cut this, cut this wire that goes from the tube here, to the flyback transformer that's on the on the circuit board. Now that should help eliminate any power that might have possibly, you know, have been in the system. There shouldn't be, and honestly. This thing is so gross, I'm pretty sure I was sitting for quite a while before I got it. But, you know, just to just to try to help eliminate any sort of shock risk from, uh, from the, um, you know, capacitors that are on the circuit board here or anything like that, you know. Minimizing risk, that's what it's all about. Well, minimizing risk and making the most money. Well, it's not always about making the most money, but generally, it's about making as much as you can with what you get. <laughs> For some people, anyways, you know. Others, it may be better just to, uh, um, that's the word, I can't think of it. Uh, volume, that's it. Work in volume. And I made another mess. Alright, so we have one low grade board that's stuck in here under all this steel sheeting. So, I might try to get that out later, we'll see. If not, I'll just sell it as light iron. And we've got, let's see here, a piece of cable there. Um, see how much this, you know, number two insulated I can get. Off, so let's just keep cutting through wires here. Um, I think that one's still holding it. What do we have for degaussing cable? Do we not have one? Oh, I 
that's really weird. Doesn't look like we actually have a degaussing cable on this one. Oh, we do. But it's worth literally nothing. So that's not much fun, huh? Wow, I've never seen that before. That's probably the first time I've seen such a crappy degaussing cable in, in one of these. Now, we've got the yoke here, and the way you get tricked to getting these off... I mean, if you're in the right kind of space, you could just smash it, but I wouldn't recommend it as these are pressurized. So if you can help it, it's probably better to not. I've never had one blow up on me, and I don't know anyone who has. But it's probably good to min you know, minimize the risks, again, as I had said. Oh. What the hell? This is really weird. I've never seen one of these before either. like a twisty one. This is really weird, actually. Oh, okay. And just get the yoke off. Just kind of pull it up and out. And there you go. You got a yoke. You know, you can clean up some of this wire here. I think most of that can go this number two insulated. Clean up the rest of this. At some point when I get to it, I'll go through and pull all this number two copper out of it. So, last thing that you want to do, if you have time for it, obviously, is just kind of go through and pull out all these, you know, all these little bits of, uh, you know, what, what, you know, would look to be just a piece of steel, but in reality, it's all tin copper, or tin coated copper. It's not going to show up very well on the camera, so I'm not going to try to show you. But I believe it's, um, I don't know if it's tin plated or if it's nickel plated, but generally it's just called tin copper. Tinned copper. So, this is pretty much it, and then I'll slide this piece back on here. And then I will take it to the transfer station at some point. So, that one's done. So it took me about five minutes. So I'm assuming it's going to be about the same for each one. So we got another smaller one here. This one's a proton, I think is what it says. Let's check this thing out. Yeah, it says it's a proton. Never heard of or seen one of these, so that's really interesting. So, standard procedure. The, uh, this one's a nice, real big, thick piece. Oh, um, number, number two insulated. This one here, I'm just going to stick in a number three, just because it has that little ferrite bead bit. So that's low grade copper wire. Again, gold plated plug. Number two insulated. So this one's, you know, more standard screw. Oh, actually, it almost looks like uh, the screws have pretty much been removed from this one, actually. Oh, nice. There's a um. sure I just released all the pressure that was in that chamber. So, that's kind of cool, I guess. Um, this stupid thing is going to come apart, is it? There we go. Yeah, I believe I did just accidentally release yeah, I did. I, I shattered that glass bulb bit, which is okay. It's not not a huge problem. Just trying to avoid that if I if I possibly could, but it's okay. It happens. Anyways, got our 
flyback transformer piece here. Get that off. Start cutting wires. So I apologize for not having any videos out recently, but I just don't get the time. Or honestly, you know, not everything I pick up is all that interesting. So I'm just trying to find stuff to, you know, actually make it worth my time to, you know, do a video. So I, you know, I try to wait till I have enough of a certain item to do a, you know, either like a mini, uh, mini kind of, uh, scrap session kind of thing. Jeez, I can't think today. So, another low grade board. You know, there's some wire on here. I'll clean all that up. But apart from that, this one's pretty much ready to go. So, we're going to do the same thing here with the yoke. And this one's got that little extra piece. Oh, a couple extra pieces that'll provide some nice extra copper. So that's cool. That's kind of the whole goal of these, is getting the copper out. Now, this, this glass piece here, this tube, whatever you do, do not throw that in the garbage. It should not go there. It's not trash. It's, uh, it's made of leaded glass. So it's like a lead-infused glass kind of thing. So it's not, you know, not really suitable for the garbage. And this is going to be a real pain in the ass to get off, isn't it? This one's gonna fight me the whole way. At least I'm thinking it will. That's what it's looking like. I'd really rather not break this if I can help it. Man, these pieces are. Never had these plastic pieces cause such a goddamn problem. They're never this bad. Anyways, yeah, you know, I'm trying to, uh, I'm just trying to make videos that are interesting and not the same repetitive stuff. So whenever I get something interesting, you know, I'll, you know, I'll try and try and do a scrap video on that rather than you know something simple and lame. So this one did break. But you know we have these little extra bits of bare bright copper in there, so that's good. So I'm probably just gonna try to pull this end piece out. Get rid of his, you know, glass. Anyways, um, this one does have a degaussing cable, which is nice. Oh this piece here also contains get it off. This also contains well, this one in this case here it'll be number number two copper but that's okay. Copper is copper, am I right? <laughs> Let's do a little demonstration here of how to uh, take care of this. Now what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna do that so I can try to pull away the shell here. Pull as much copper as I can here. Now this is copper even though it's painted red. I don't know why they do that, but sometimes companies paint the copper red. I don't know if that's for um, some sort of uh, like, um, what's the word there? Some sort of insulation purpose where they don't want to cover it where they have to like keep it really thin and not insulate it with something else. And copper just or and you know the red paint kind of thing just works. Or I really don't know what they use to make it red, but they do. So it can't go as number one. Usually. Just because, you know, the red paint or red lacquer, whatever it is, it's generally frowned upon by your scrapyard. I mean if you throw one in that's okay. You know, I, I would think they're not going to really give you a hard time about it.
out if you throw one of these in with your number one. But generally, it goes as number two. Oops. Scrap beards won't be all that happy if you uh, try to throw it elsewhere. Anyways, let's see what we got for degaussing cable on this thing. I didn't miss the degaussing cable on the other one, did I? Oh, I did. Well, there is one in there, so we're going to have to get that out after. So, it does look like we have to take the whole thing apart. Well, that's fine. Doesn't bother me, it's not that hard. So, at the end of the video, we can go back and uh, check out the degaussian cable. Degaussing cable for the first one. I don't know if it's degauss or degauss, I've always called it degaussing. So, I don't know, I'm not really expecting miracles here. So, we'll see what we get. You know, I'm not really expecting anything wonderful, but hopefully we'll get something decent. So, more tin copper. So, I do have another another video I'm going to probably record it's, you know, right after this one. It's a bunch of really old vintage laptops. I think that could be really, really cool. Now, with degaussing cables, some of these are aluminum, some are copper for the most part. They're copper, and this one really feels like it's copper, and it uh, and it definitely is copper. If they're really, really light, and don't feel as dense as they should for a you know large piece of copper wire like this, it probably isn't copper. <laughs> That's a really, really good way to be able to just kind of think it through. And if you can, the best thing you can do is just cut right into it. Now. These are strippable, but sometimes they can kind of be a real pain in the butt, especially since it's like this weird tape thing that they actually wrap around it. It's not just normal insulation, so it can take a long time. It can kind of be a pain in the ass. So if you have the patience to deal with it, go ahead. It's probably worth your time. But if not, don't worry. Most scrapyards should buy that as a... Um, as a number one insulated. If they don't, they're probably ripping you off. Especially if they don't give you a good solid reason not to buy it as that. Anyways, our last full one here is a Dell model D828L. For anyone that's interested. Let's see here, can I drill all of these out? I, I really hope so. So, there we go. Come on. Is there even a screw in there? Oh, well, there definitely is. Well, that's what a hand screwdriver is for, I guess. Anyways, I don't get these, you know, I don't get these CRTs that often. Well, the problem is, it's really hard to get rid of these things, and, you know, most people encourage you to get rid of this tube. Right now, I have a way to get rid of it without having to pay, pay to get rid of that tube, but, you know, that could change any time. So, as of now, I'm not charging for CRTs, just because, you know, the amount of copper in most of them is still worth it. Well, pressure got let out of that one too. <laughs> it's okay though. It happens. So I'm going to go through and clean all these up after the video because, as I said before, there's no point in me watching me clean it all up. If you're watching this, you probably know how to clean up the <laughs> wire and scrap and stuff like that. Um, let's see. Oh, yay. 
this one might just be one of those that I'm gonna break. It's not like a regular, regular Phillips head. It's a hex head. I don't have one of those on me at the moment. So that's not really, that's not very nice. <laughs> what would it take to get this thing off? Oh, just a couple screws. Somehow I accidentally managed to uh, make it try to tighten the screws. I don't know how I did that. Good. Yeah, see, some of the degaussing cables are real easy to get out. Others, most definitely not. Oh, I didn't cut this piece first. Oops. Now, well, I've never been electrocuted, and I've definitely done plenty of these. I've seen plenty of other people do them and not get electrocuted. I know it's kind of a uh, it's kind of a debated subject. <laughs> you know how dangerous these things are to do. But okay, so this one here actually is two degaussing cables. Degaussing cables. Yeah, this one here. Now sometimes when you have these two, one can be copper and one can be aluminum. I've seen it both ways, where the top one's copper and the top and the bottom's aluminum, and vice versa. This one here is most definitely copper. So, that's nice. Well, at the very least, we're getting some number one copper copper out of it. We're in about 22 minutes. Alright, so I'll probably just go ahead and get that degaussing cable out of the, uh, out of the other one after we finish here. Could just kind of smash this over the uh, over the bucket. Might be the best way to take care of this one. I'll break it there. You know, I just have to be careful and you know, not get glass all over everything. better way to have done this, but me being me, I definitely found the, most, the hardest way to do it. Come on. The best solution probably would have just been to go fine. Bit, but honestly, I don't know where where I would have one. There we go. So I'm gonna have to go through and make sure there's no glass laying around anywhere and clean up any little bits that might have that made it somewhere so someone doesn't hurt themselves. one feels, I don't know, will probably be copper. Yep, definitely copper. Alright, well, thank you guys for watching. I know it wasn't a particularly long video, but you know, it's something, it's better than nothing.
you know, at this stage, honestly, not that many people are going to see this. So, for those who do, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your support. See you next time.